I'm going to describe the steps in the Lindy liquefaction cycle in which we take nitrogen at room temperature and convert it into liquid nitrogen. So, so we feed in nitrogen here, room temperature, one bar pressure. We compress it to high pressure. Here I'm showing one compressor, but we need to get the high pressure in order to, one, be in the right region in the phase diagram, and also in order to take advantage of adiabatic Joule-Thompson expansion. So we compress it, which of course raises the temperature of the gas, and so we go through heat exchange, cooler, move the heat so we get back to around room temperature again. And then the critical part of this cycle is the heat exchange. And so the idea is that down here we have liquid nitrogen. So this is around 77 Kelvin. The gas in equilibrium with that nitrogen is also at 77 Kelvin. So we'll use that gas to cool down this room temperature, high pressure gas. This, of course, nitrogen gas at 77 Kelvin is at one bar pressure. And so we'll raise the temperature of that gas, which we then recycle, mix again with the feed. That process creates a much lower temperature here. In the examples that we'll do in subsequent screencasts, this, for example, 165 Kelvin, and we'll look at 200 bar pressure. We go through Joule-Thompson expansion, which is constant enthalpy. So we condense a fraction of this gas entering to liquid. The majority then for nitrogen is recycled. This process also works for other gas besides nitrogen, and we can get a higher percentage that's liquid, for example, if we use methane. So this is the cycle, and the idea is that we can convert whatever flow rate, so we have a mass flow rate in of nitrogen, and we have a mass flow rate out of liquid nitrogen. Well, these mass flow rates are going to be equal at steady state, but we're recycling much more than we're feeding in. And so as a result, it requires a significantly large amount of work in the compressor here for every kilogram of liquid nitrogen that we form. Now, one problem with this particular cycle is that to go from one bar to 200 bar, we have a very large temperature increase, which creates major material problems for a compressor. It also turns out to require more energy than if we use several compressors. So more realistic process looks like the following. So here I've shown three compressors where, for example, we go from one bar to five bar in the first compressor, and we remove heat back to room temperature, go from 5 bar to 25 bar in the second compressor, again remove heat. In this case, we'll go from 25 bar to 200 bar in the third compressor, again remove heat before we go into heat exchanger. So this means the outlet temperatures are much, much lower than if we used one compressor trying to go to 200 bar. And also, it turns out if we add the work for the three compressors together, it's also smaller than the work for the one compressor going to the much higher pressure. So this is the Lindy cycle, sometimes called the lindy Hemp cycle. And what we'll do in subsequent screencast is show this process on pressure enthalpy diagram and a temperature entropy diagram. And then we'll do the calculations for what fraction of the circulating material, what fraction of the gas that's fed into the Joule-Thompson expansion is converted to liquid, and how much work does it actually require to create a kilogram of liquid.